Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Sharang. Today we will understand the approach to a patient who is unconscious and unresponsive. What needs to be done when you come across such a patient? What your role is as a team member or a team leader and how this team dynamics works in the favor of the patient. Let's see today. So here we have a situation of a 50-year-old male patient who is undergoing treatment for gastroenteritis. Now this patient here was found unconscious, unresponsive by the family members who then came to the nursing station and informed the doctor and the nurse. Now here we are in the patient's room to assess the situation. Please see the steps carefully and then apply them depending upon the situation. The first step in assessing the patient is to ensure that the scene is safe. So we will ensure that the family members around us are waiting outside the room. In case the family members are present inside the room, you will not be able to give your 100%. So the first step is ensuring that the scene is safe. After we have done that, we check the response of the patient. Now how do we do that? We tap on the shoulders of the patient hard. Sir, are you okay? Now, if we don't get the response from the patient, we ask the nurse, or the doctor who is adjacent to us to activate the code blue and get the crash card. Staff nurse Bitto, can you activate the code blue and please get the crash card and please send two to three nurses for help. After I've asked one of my nursing staffs to activate the code blue and get the crash card, I'll check for the breathing and the circulation simultaneously. To check for the central pulse, I'll check for the central pulse for no more than 10 seconds. And at the same time, check for the breathing. Now, how do we check for the breathing? We see a visible chest rise or we can feel the exhalation in our ear. Now, I do not see any chest rise. I cannot feel the exhalation and I cannot feel the central pulse. How do we count the central pulse? We count 10 seconds by counting 1001, 1002, 1003 all the way to 1010. So what we have done here is we have checked for the central pulse for no more than 10 seconds and checked for the breathing simultaneously. Now this patient does not have a pulse, is not breathing, is in cardio respiratory arrest and the steps to follow will be as shown. So I've asked one of the nursing staffs for help. Now he has gone to activate the code blue and get the crash card. While I await the other help, I'll start the high quality compressions. Now we start this by focusing on the patient's lower chest. Now the lower side of the chest would be somewhere here. We focus on the center of the chest, the lower half of the chest, and we use the base of the palm of the hand or the heel of the hand to start the compressions. I should be positioned on the patient. I am a right hand dominant person, so I use my right hand to give the high quality compressions. My left arm or the left hand will support my right hand. I am perpendicularly over the patient and I start the high quality compressions like this. So here we have two nurses who have come to our help. Now I'm going to ask one of the nurses to become the compressor and the other nurse to take the ventilation. Please start. So here we are ensuring that the compressions are of high quality. Thank you. So here we have completed five sets 
of high quality compressions and ventilations. So what we have done here is given 30 compressions to ventilations and done five of these sets. After five cycles, that is approximately two and a half minutes of high quality CPR, we saw one of the nursing staffs come and attach the leads on the patient. During the five cycles, when the leads are being connected, we will not stop the CPR. Now it's important that we assess the rhythm because the rhythm of the patient can either be shockable or non-shockable. But I'm going to repeat again, we will not stop the CPR by the time the leads are connected. So we'll just check the rhythm right now. The rhythm seems non-shockable. Our nurses have given five cycles of high quality CPR. And of course, the nurse who was at the compressor end is tired by now. So we will ask them to switch their roles. So Pinky, can you come on the compression end? Shirender, can you become the ventilator? Thank you. Because this rhythm is non-shockable, we'll resume the high quality CPR for this patient. Please start the compressions. So this time again, we finished five sets of high quality compressions and ventilations. We are seeing the rhythm. Now we can see an activity on the monitor. We'll check for the central pulse. So we have a pulse now. That means we would term the situation as the return of spontaneous circulation. The CPA was performed well. We gave high quality compressions at the rate of 100 to 120 compressions per minute. We positioned our palm and the heel of the hand on the center, the lower part of the center of the chest. Every compression was two inches in depth. Every ventilation ensured that the chest was rising with each breath. And now we managed to revive the patient. So it's time for us to shift this patient either to the emergency department or the intensive care unit. We'll continue with the AMBU ventilations, which should be one breath every five to six seconds and a high quality breath. So wonderful team effort. So here you saw that every team member had a designated role. I as a team leader did not test the patient, but ensure that the team members performed well and had clear instructions. That's how you revive a patient and I wish you all the best. Thank you.